So here I am in my developer org here. And what I wanna do first is we wanna talk about tasks and events. So I'm gonna jump onto an account here and show you what that looks like. We'll jump here onto this account. And over here on the right side is the activity timeline, which is a component here on this lightning page. And in the activity management, what's important to note is that you have tasks and you have events. And think of a task can really be several things. Uh, a task can be a reminder to take action on this record. Uh, a task is also how you log calls. And even in some cases with a, a lot of enablement, it's how emails can appear as well. Um, and so we're gonna talk through these pieces here as well as the events. Um, so what I wanna do first is show you what it looks like on the activity timeline where I can actually create these tasks for myself, for the team that relate to these records. So I'm gonna click here on the activity timeline and I'm gonna hit new task. You'll see this pop-up come up. Uh, this is the, just the basic layout that you can have for the uh, activity uh, for the new task here. Um, I'll put in here task or test uh, reminder, right? You can put it in a due date. Uh, I'll put that in for Monday. And what you wanna know here is that you can relate it to uh, a name and a related to record. The name has to be either a lead or a contact, hence the actual individual's name, or you can relate it to another record. In this case, it's already because I decided to create this task already on the account, it's automatically putting the account in here, but you can also relate it to um, really every other object. Uh, very commonly, you'll see this on accounts, you'll see this on opportunities, and then obviously for the service team, you'll see this on cases very commonly. Um, but that's important to note that you have the, the name, which you'll notice is the who ID on the, the back end of Salesforce, and the related to is the what ID. And again, it's linking this reminder to different records. So in this case, we'll put, uh, we'll put a, a contact that you see here on the left, and then we're gonna attach it to the same um, account here. And so you can have the status, you know, not started, completed, progress, et cetera. Um, we're just gonna create a, a test here. And so now you see that I have this test reminder so this is part of that activity, right? So someone can come in, they can see this account, they can see what details, and they can also see maybe any upcoming or overdue tasks or reminders that come in. As I mentioned, oftentimes with enablement tools such as Outreach, SalesLoft, Groove, et cetera, uh, they will bring in your, your activity, whether it's emails or calls, and they'll port it into Salesforce as a task. And as it comes over, you'll see it under the activity timeline. So that is how I created a test task or reminder. Now, moving on here, um, I do wanna here, we're gonna log a call. So if you have a phone installed, you may be calling directly with uh, the Salesforce caller or you might have a different phone uh, tied to Salesforce. Um, here's where you can log a call manually. So I could have it as call, I can again relate it as a, uh, to a, an account, as well as to an individual, a leader or contact. I can add comments in here. You'll notice that this is a call, but as I hit save, you now see a call back here from today. And what's nice is that as I hit into this call, you'll notice up here that this is still, under the important on the URL, this is still a task. This is not a call object. This is still a task object where again, I can go in here and I can edit uh, these things, right? I can um, edit who it was related to, the due date, priority, et cetera. And then because I have that related to, it's, it's linked to via lookup to an account, I can click and go back to the account. So, so far I have a task and I have a call. Now I wanna go over the email. You are able to send emails directly out of Salesforce. Um, as long as you have that enabled. And I could type in, I could use classic email templates, lightning templates, and I can put those directly into Salesforce and email straight from Salesforce. Um, obviously, if, if these had 
um, you know, these were real contacts. I could go ahead and email this out directly to them with a the subject. I could add, you know, different editing, formatting, URL links, um, and, and images. And so you can actually email from uh, Salesforce as well. And so, um, you know, as it says here, really don't have verified user. This is a developer org. Uh, but this will show up under the activity timeline as well as an email. And in this case, if it's sent as an email, it'll come through as an email object. Now, oftentimes you'll have your team that has their inboxes set up, uh, whether it's through an enablement tool or whether they're emailing straight out of Gmail or Outlook. And we'll talk in just a second about Einstein Activity Capture and how those can come in automatically. And to know a little bit about Einstein Activity Capture, as you may see a question on the task, and we'll go over that in a second. But so far I have, again, a task, I have a call, and then I wanna go over the event. So as I go into an event, an event is, is like, you want to think of that as a meeting, as a demo, uh, as an actual time that you sat down or spoke with the client that wasn't on a phone call necessarily um, or over email. And so this is gonna be a test event. And on this, I can put this even well into the future. So we'll say that maybe I have a demo scheduled for next Wednesday. Uh, we'll put this down during working hours at 9.30 here. I can call it an all day event. And I can again, attach it to an individual, a contact or a lead under the who ID, or under an account, opportunity, case, really any object under the what ID. Um, and I can assign it to not only myself, I can also assign this to others. And so I'll hit save here and you'll see how this is gonna show differently on the activity timeline. So we have here, uh, I have call, I have that email, I have that reminder upcoming in a few days, and then I have that event that is upcoming as well. And so this is the activity timeline. In my mind, this is extremely important for your team to get very good context on the history that you've had with uh, this record, whether it's an account, an individual, et cetera. A few things to note is, um, you know, a few buttons to it that are important that are, in my mind, very helpful from a UI perspective. As a, as a sales rep, I would always hit this expand all just so I could kind of skim through the email or skim through the notes on the meeting uh, without having to click into them individually, as well as this, this button here is understanding the date range, right? A lot of times I'll get asked by someone on the team that says, hey, I thought we had activity with this individual. Why is it not showing? And a lot of times it's because the date range, you know, defaulted, it may not be all time. It may be last seven days, you know, next, et cetera. And so you wanna make sure that this is set up to where you can see all activity. So for example, if I would hit next seven days, you won't see the things that happened um, necessarily uh, up front in the past, right? Uh, it's gonna say view more, et cetera, show all activities, et cetera. Um, and so you wanna make sure that you have that set up for all time. Uh, and so I'm gonna hit apply and save there. So this is the activity timeline. This is allowing you to see um, events, act reminders, tasks, emails, and phone calls.